uh, over the last six weeks. Uh, today has been probably the most satisfying because we know as a family that we are going to get justice and he is going to get convicted on all four. Um, there is no grounds for an NCR. Um, he has nothing to reach for anymore. And, uh, you know, when we spoke with the Crowns this afternoon, I stated to them that, you know, the judge needs to do the right thing and, and convict him on four counts of first degree murder to show this country that it stops here that our women are not garbage, they will not be thrown in landfills, and we will not tolerate, tolerate it anymore. So it stops with our family, and we're not allowing it anymore. A garbage dump is not a grave site. A garbage dump is a garbage dump, and our women do not belong there, and they never belong there, because our women deserve better. Over and over again, we've sat here at these conferences, we put our feelings and our emotions out there, you know, we grieved in front of the world essentially when we didn't have to, but we did it because we wanted to see justice, and not only justice for my mom, but justice for these three other women, Morgan, Mercedes, Rebecca, and Buffalo woman, who still remains unidentified to this day. And so I want to draw attention to that too, that there's an Indigenous woman right now who still lives without an identity. You've been defending this guy for the last two years, how are you feeling at this point? Oh. Tremendously, it was a tremendous emotional impact to that because he admitted to killing them. It's not like he didn't say, I didn't kill him. It's really from the inception he stated that. So, as a criminal defense attorney, with that in mind, I mean, we're there's part of us, huge part of us is their humanity too. And that's why I described uh, what happened between March and uh, May 2022 is uh, catastrophic in every sense of the word human, the cost of it, and so on. And it's our position, we have an entirely sick human being who did it.